Uh, we ask that everyone stand as Chief Robert McNally of the Morris County Prosecutor's Office opens our event by playing Minstrel Boy on his pipes as the Morris County 100th, 100th Basic Police Training Class Flag Detail led by Chief Jack Ambrose raises and lowers the colors. Thank you. Please be seated. I've always wanted to say that. So, um, you all here? We have uh, 16 Morris County heroes in attendance to honor today. Um, again, I just want to take a moment to thank all our veterans and everyone who made it out. I also want to give a quick shout out to my old pals at VFW Post 7333 in Randolph. My new friend, yeah, give him a hand. My new friends at American Legion Post 59 in Morristown. And some special guests we have joining us all the way from Fort Lee today, VFW Post 2342. We have Vietnam veteran John Mack and World War II veterans Augie Cacavoni, 96 years young, and Gene Iaconetti, 99 years young, turning, turning 100 next month. So again, let's hear it for all our veterans today. Ceremony's kicking off. And on that note, ladies, gentlemen, and veterans, it's time to introduce your MC, which in this case has three different meanings. Master of Ceremonies, Morris County Commissioner, and Marine Corps veteran himself, Director John Crickus. Thank, thank you very much, Vince, and thank you, everyone, for joining us today. I want to thank you on behalf of the Morris County Board of County Commissioners for our annual Memorial Day observance. This tradition will again include a ceremony of presentation of medals to our local veterans and later some refreshments. As we begin, I would ask if everyone would stand. And if the Honorable Stuart Minkowitz could come up to lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Remain standing. Remain standing. 
Thank you, Judge Minkowitz. I now ask that the Lakeview School of Denville Select Choir, led by vocal teacher Daniel Komarowski, sing our national anthem. Thank you, Mr. Komorowski and the Lakeview Choir. It's terrific to have you to return to participate for the second year in a row. And isn't it special to have young people here with some World War II veterans? I would like to now introduce Rabbi Levi Dubinsky, who works with Sheriff Gannon in the Sheriff's Department as chaplain, who will lead our invocation today. He is the director of the Havad Center of Northwest New Jersey, serving Mountain Lakes, Booten and Denville. Rabbi. Almighty God, Father of all mankind, on this special weekend of memorial, we honor the heroic children of our country who rendered their full measure of devotion on all the far-flung battlefields of the world in the defense of the United States. They fought heroically and courageously in storms of fire and blood so that we may enjoy the blessings of liberty, democracy, and freedom. We pray to you, Almighty, bestow your divine blessings upon the, her the heroic veterans and, our po and upon their families. And may their devotion and loyalty be an inspiration to us and to all our fellow Americans. Let this Memorial Day stimulate us to be mindful of our responsibilities and duties as conscientious citizens of this great republic. We pray to you, God, sustain the leaders of this free world in their efforts to remove the threat of tyranny and aggression wherever it rears its head. Help all nations of our world realize the cruelty of bloodshed and the fut futility of warfare. Inspire them to labor with all their might to banish conflict and strife and to establish world peace. Hasten the fulfillment of the vision of our prophets when the work of righteousness shall be peace and its effects trans tranquility and, secu and security forever. When nation shall not lift up sword against nation, neither shall they learn war anymore. He who makes peace on high, may he bring peace upon us and upon of all humanity. And let us all say, Amen. Thank you, Rabbi. You may all be seated. And again, we really appreciate you joining us today. I know this weekend there'll be a number of ceremonies around Morris County, 
and I know there's terrific attendance around Morris County, so this is, this is a special time. Uh, let me start by acknowledging and thanking some of the best special guests joining us. S to, mo to my left, Senator Anthony Bucco, Assemblywoman Aura Dunn, Assemblyman Chris Barranco, Assemblyman Brian Bergen, Administrator Dina Leary is here with us, Sheriff Jim Gannon and his leadership staff, Prosecutor Robert Carroll, First Assistant Maggie Calderwood, and Chief Detective Robert McNally. We also have County Clerk Ann Grassi, County Surrogate Heather Darling, Deputy Surrogate Chris Luongo, and CCM President Tony Iacono and his staff. Representing Congressman Tom Kane is Nicholas Henry, his staff assistant. I know they're here somewhere. Oh. And representing Congresswoman Cheryl is Willie Tolba, her office's military and veterans liaison. And of course, we have all of our county commissioners here today. To my right, Deputy Director Christine Myers, Doug Cabana, Typhoon Selen, Tom Mastrangelo, Stephen Shaw, and Deborah Smith. Finally, we are also fortunate to have with us a former freeholder, as they were called, Frank Jutzler, Frank, if you could hear, make yourself known, who was instrumental in starting our Memorial Day observance and initiating the medals we are presenting to our veterans nearly 25 years ago, and also, happy birthday, Frank. So we now come to a portion of our annual observation when we look back on a fallen Morris County hero. Doing the honors this year is Deputy Commissioner Director Christine Myers. Christine? Thank you. Thank you, Director. And welcome all of you. Morris County does not forget its heroes, especially those who have fallen in combat or during military service. We have made it a tradition to recognize at least one by name at our Memorial Day observance. And this year, we look back to George W. Cook, who died in the Philippine War, a conflict overshadowed in history by the Spanish-American War. On February 15, 1898, the sinking of the USS Maine in Havana Harbor led to the battle cry, Remember the Maine! And by April 21st of that year, America was at war with Spain. George Cook, born in Morristown on September 3, 1875, was 22 years old when he enlisted in the U.S. Army on June 3, 1898, and landed in Company M with the 2nd New Jersey Volunteer Infantry. After training at Seagirt, he was stationed in Florida before returning to New Jersey, where he was confined to his home after showing signs of symptoms of typhoid fever. He missed the war with Spain. By December 1898, the war ended with an armistice that, by which Spain left Dominion of Puerto Rico, Guam, and the Philippines to the United States. But that triggered the Philippine-American War in which American soldiers fought from February 1899 to 1902 to suppress many of the same Filipino insurgents who had been revolting against Spain. Mr. Cook re-enlisted for service and he was attached to the United States Army 4th Regiment deployed to Lazoon. It was there near the city of Imus on June 18, 1898, 1990, that, 1990, 1899, that Private George Cook was shot in the temple and instantly died. The U.S. lost far more troops in the battles in the Philippines than in its entire conflict with Spain. Private Cook was returned home for burial in Morristown, where fellow veterans from Company M served as his pallbearers. His funeral was held practically right around the corner at the Church of the Assumption on Maple Avenue here in Morristown. Taps was played by a Civil War veteran as Private George Cook was laid to rest in St. Mary's Cemetery. I now ask everyone here to please join me in a moment of silence uh, for Pri Private George Cook and all of those lost in service to our great nation.
Thank you, Christine. a few remarks, but before I make those remarks, I uh, want to make a, an announcement of some news this week. As Vince said, I, I had the honor to serve in the United States Marine Corps, and as we say in the Marines, you can talk the talk, but can you walk the walk? Right? Words are one thing, action are another. Well, this week, the uh, Morris County Commissioners announced we are providing an additional $300,000 of funding for veteran services using nonprofits, for housing, transportation, and other services, added to $350,000 we allocated a couple years ago for mental health services. We're also going to expand our veteran service office area. We're going to double the space. We're increasing staff and doubling the space in order to provide better services, and we'll complete that this year. And Friday, uh, at County College of Morris, Dr. Iacono, are you here somewhere? There he is. Uh, we announced with the New Jersey Manufacturing Expansion Program, one of only five or six colleges in the country working in the last Cong Congress with Congresswoman Cheryl to receive a $5 million grant to educate our veterans in manufacturing uh, certificate program. And so we're, we're moving ahead with that. And I would also uh, mention that a few weeks ago, we had an event with both Congressman Kane and Congresswoman Cheryl to lobby for funding to bring a new vet center for, to County College of Morris, to Northwest New Jersey, so veterans have less time to travel uh, for a number of services, including mental health services. And I want to introduce our veteran service officers, officers here. So you can see Dr. Iacona, if you want to get into that manufacturing program. You don't have to be from Morris County, by the way. It's for veterans from ev everywhere. But we have Jessica, Jason, Andrew, from our Veteran Service Office, standing up here. Also, Lisa and Carol. Is Carol here? Carol, if you could stand, because in three weeks, Carol will be retiring. So we thank you for your service. <laughs> Among our national holidays, Memorial Day is our most solemn observance. Those we honor made the ultimate sacrifice but we can only thank them through the veil of faith. It is right and deserved we hold this observant and stop and think. Those we honored, as we've seen with our World War II veterans who are still here, sacrificed de decades, decades of their lives and all the simple pleasures that we take for granted. A coffee in the morning, a walk in the neighborhood, everything we do, gone. Many never had a chance to marry, have children, enjoy the embrace of loved ones, the laughter of friends. However, one can imagine that those who gave all would want us to fully embrace and celebrate the tremendous inheritance that they gave us and indeed the world. As America approaches 250 years of independence, one could say there has been no greater force for good in the world than the United States and the United States Armed Forces. For they not only sacrifice for their buddies, they sacrifice for future generations of Americans who are with us today. And in a real sense, we are their progeny. They not only fought to defend our borders, they fought for our founding principles, self-government, individual rights, mm -hmm. due process, the rule of law. They ended slavery, liberated concentration camps, and provided many nations the opportunity to enjoy freedom. Just go on the internet and look up nighttime sky satellite image for North Korea versus South Korea. You'll see a dark, oppressed, impoverished North Korea with concentration camps and no hope. And in South Korea, vibrant, lit up, one of the wealthiest countries in the world and a solid ally of the United States. The dowry of liberty they bestowed us is everything. And all of us have the right to decide what career to pursue, where to live, what to do each day. We are free. So thank you again for being here today, for remembering, for reflecting, and appreciating those who made possible the wonderful American way of life we all enjoy. God bless the fallen, and God bless America.
you know, last year I was at one of those wonderful ceremonies uh, across Morris County, and I heard our next, next speaker uh, give his, his talk, and I said, we need to get him next year. Our keynote speaker this year is Morris County's own Assemblyman Brian Bergen. Brian has been a member of the New Jersey Assembly since 2020. Most of all, he is a combat veteran who served with distinction for eight years in the U.S. Army after graduating from the United States Military Academy at West Point. During his military service, he was an officer, a company commander, and a an Apache helicopter pilot. His assignments earned him a Bronze Star and the Combat Action Badge for his actions in Iraq. He holds an MBA from Rutgers Professional School and a Master's Degree in Administration of Justice and Security. Brian is a businessman and entrepreneur. He has served on the council in his hometown of Denville, where he and his wife Kristen and her two children, Samantha and Justin, reside. Ladies and gentlemen, I give you Brian Bergen. I give you a hard sleep, but I don't have a cover on that. Good afternoon, everybody. My name is Brian Bergen, and as Commissioner Crickus mentioned, I'm a West Point graduate, former attack helicopter pilot who served in Operation Iraqi Freedom. My time in that conflict changed me forever. Since my time in Iraq, I have not been a big fan of Memorial Day or Memorial Day celebrations. Not because I don't see their value, and not because I don't believe they're necessary, but because for me personally, they're hard to handle. You see, I, I remember vividly sitting in a hangar waiting to go off to war and watching men and women say goodbye to their loved ones. I watched as fathers and mothers had to be pulled from their daughters and sons. I watched husbands and wives leaving weeping spouses. And worst of all, I watched young future fathers walk away from pregnant wives. And not all of those soldiers would come home. Not all of those children-to-be would ever know their fathers. And not all those loved ones would ever see their soldiers come back again. Among those who didn't return, sitting next to me on that day, was my classmate and friend, Captain Joe Fenton Lusk. Thirteen days later, he was dead. It's heart-wrenching for me to think about. I remember the faces of every soldier who died in Iraq with me. And I remember as vividly the faces of the loved ones they left behind. There isn't a single day that goes by that I don't think that it's unfair that I'm here and they're not. Not one minute will ever pass where I can feel satisfied that I've truly earned their sacrifice. So I guess the question I have to ask myself, and you should ask yourselves here today and through this weekend, is what we can do to truly honor the sacrifices of our, full, our fallen warriors have made for us. While ceremonies and gatherings serve a needed purpose to give us reason to pause and joint remember, remembrance, they alone are not enough. I've struggled with this for quite some time. I've dug deep to find answers to the ways in which I could personally subside my own guilt. After years of reflection and thought and prayer, I've realized that no amount of remembrance to those I've lost will ever be enough. There is no special number of ceremonies or bricks with their names on them or banners on poles that will ever honor them enough. The only true way to honor their sacrifice is to live a life worthy of the gift they've given us, the gift of freedom. Each of us needs to make the most of every single day and live a life to the fullest, constantly, always striving to improve, and constantly making those around us and the world as a whole a better place. If it were me lying on a field taking my last breath, and I could know that all of my future generations could know only one thing, I would want them to not waste one second of the life they have. 
And if I could know for sure that my death would help them to live even one more second of a fulfilled life, then I would be satisfied. I know that my brothers and sisters in arms who died in my time of service and those who died in the generations before me and those who died after me would feel exactly the same. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen, for the absolute honor to speak in front of you today. God bless you and God bless America. Thank you. Thank you very much, Brian. Really appreciate uh, those words. I've heard you speak about your service and it's always inspirational. We will now turn to our local veterans and their families who gather here today as we present our Morris County Distinguished Service Medals to 16 veterans, veterans who served honorably in our armed forces. Now, I know this is a little more than we usually do. We have a few more. But we're probably honoring oh, well over 100 years of service. So a few extra minutes. This is it going to bother anyone? The Morris County Board of County Commissioners has traditionally used the occasion of a Memorial Day observance to recognize resident veterans by presenting them with the Morris County Distinguished Military Service Medal. These medals are unique to Morris County, although copied in many ways. We began issuing them in 1999 to honor World War II veterans on the 55th anniversary of D-Day invasion and the liberation of France from Nazi occupation. We expanded the medals to include Vietnam and Korea, as well as general service in our military during other conflicts. And last year marked the unveiling of new medals for Iraq and Afghanistan. These honors are presented to veterans who served honorably and who have helped to make our nation and Morris County a better place to live. As the commissioners individually present the Distinguished Military Service Medals, they'll be joined by State Senator Anthony Bucco, Assemblywoman Ora Dunn, and Assemblyman Chris Barranco will simultaneously, simultaneously present joint Senate Assembly resolutions for each veteran. Additionally, Willie Tolba of Congresswoman Cheryl's office and Nicholas Henry of Congresswoman Kane's, Congressman Kane's office will present certificates of honor from their offices. So, Commissioners, we get ready. Our first veteran, Frank. G. Blair of Long Hill Township is no longer with us. Sadly, he passed away on March 27th of this year. However, his wife of 50 years, Joan, and daughter Nicole, have graciously joined us to accept his honors. Please come up. Presenting the first Distinguished Service Medal and Certificate of Authentication is Commissioner Deputy Director Christine Myers. Mr. Blair was a veteran of the U.S. Navy who served in the World War II era from 49 to 53. He was a storekeeper on the ship responsible for ordering, stocking, and issuing repairs, parts, clothing, and general supplies. According to his daughter, this is also accounted for why they always had excess inventory of just about everything in their house. <laughs> After military service, Mr. Blair was employed as a parts manager for Newark Spuick for many years and always took exceptional care of the family cars. He's described as a man of many talents who knew how to dance, shoot pool, and bowl. He enjoyed playing the trombone, skiing, the Boston Red Sox, the stock market, playing cards, and listening to Frank Sinatra. Mr. Blair was a wonderful neighbor who always happy to assist someone. He was faithful, loving, and a devoted husband and father. We thank the Blair family for his service. Please stand and thank you. Next is George Connolly, Jr. of Mendham Township. Presenting this medal is also Commissioner, Dir Commissioner Director Christine Myers. George Connolly is a veteran of the U.S. Army who served in Vietnam from 1965 to 1967. He earned a bachelor's degree in business administration from Northeastern University prior to entering military service in the U.S. Army Signal Corps, where he served as a company commander as a first lieutenant. He was awarded the Army Commendation Medal and National Defense Service Medal. Following military service, Mr. Connolly worked in the pharmaceutical, banking, and finance industries as a manager. He also served on Mendham's Open Space Committee, including as chairman and treasurer, and has also served on the Mendham Township Association and the Morris County Freewheelers Foundation as treasurer. 
His hobbies include bicycling, cross-country skiing, and hi hiking. Thank you, Mr. Conley, for your service, and congratulations. You can never applause enough. Our next honoree is Robert New A. Newhouse of Florham Park. Robert Newhouse is known as Bob. is a U.S. Army veteran who served in World War II, including with the U.S. Army's 78th Infantry in the Battle of the Bulge. He enlisted in 1942 after graduating West Orange High School, and though he trained in the Army Air Corps for six months, he was transferred to the Signal Corps with a specialty as a wireman. Deployed to Europe in 1944, Bob was in the Ordain Forest and the Battle of the Bulge, where he laid telephone wire day and night. He was later wounded near the Rhine River, receiving the Purple Heart as well as the Bronze Star among his honors. In civilian life, he became known as Dr. Newhouse, serving his community for 58 years as an educator in Florham Park and Madison School Districts, Kane University, Fairleigh Dickinson University, and College of St. Elizabeth. His achievements are many, and you can learn more about him on our website later today. But let me add that Bob is a loving family man with five children, 10 grandchildren, and four great-grandchildren, and one great-great-grandchild. <laughs> and at 98, he still works out three times a week. Dr. Bob Newhouse of the greatest generation, thank you for a lifelong service to the United States military and community. Commissioner Cabana will present our next honoree, Robert Kenneth Newman of Cedar Knowles. Mr. Newman served with the U.S. Navy from 1960 to 1966. He's a Vietnam-era veteran who spent four years aboard the U.S. S. Boston CAG-1 guided missile, missile carrier and was also on station during the Cuban Missile Crisis. He was a commanding officer at the Naval Reserve Manpower Center in Maryland. Mr. Newman attended college after his military service and worked for United Parcel Service for United, 25 years before retiring. He continued to serve his community volunteering with Habitat for Humanity, Habitat for Humanity Road Trip Crazies, Food Bank, and American Legion Post 155. Mr. Newman enjoyed golfing and spending time with his wife, Bernadette, to whom he's been married for 57 years. He also has a daughter, Karen, who is a registered nurse in Oklahoma. Congratulations, sir, and thank you for your service. <laughs> Commissioner Tom Mastroangelo will present to our next honoree, Joel Leibowitz of Lake Hiawatha. Mr. Leibowitz is a veteran of the U.S. Army and New Jersey National Guard who served from 1970 to 1999. I think you put us over 200 years of service here during Operation Desert Shield and Desert Storm. He's a recipient of the Army Service Ribbon, National Defense Service Medal, Army Reserve Component Achievement Medal, Army Commendation Medal, Meritorious Service Medal, and Armed Forces Reserve Medal. He was awarded the Non-Commissioned Officer Professional Development Ribbon, New, New Jersey Ribbon of Merit, New Jersey Governor's Award, National Guard Unit Strength, and New Jersey Meritorious Service Medal. He earned a bachelor's degree from Bloomfield College and was CEO of Wayne Camera Center. He's a member of the American Legion, Jewish war veterans, and a master mason. Joel and his wife Sharon have been married for 55 years. They have one son and two grandsons. Congratulations, sir, and thank, for you, for, thank you for your service. <laughs> Commissioner Mastelangelo will also present our next recipient, Kenneth Matzik of Dover. Ken, Ken is a veteran of the U.S. Air Force who served from 1964 to 68, where he attained the rank of sergeant. He was stationed at Nellis Air Force Base in Las Vegas. Mr. Matzik is a recipient of the National Defense Service Medal, Air Force Good Conduct Medal, Foreign Service Medal, and a Small Arms Expert Manufacturing Ribbon, among other service awards. After military service, Mr. Matzik worked with UPS until retirement. 
He's an active member of Post 782 Elks Lodge and is head of the Lodge's Veteran Committee. Thank you for your service, Mr. Matzik, and congratulations. <laughs> Presenting the next honor is Commissioner Stephen Shaw. Next is Shane T. Ritchieall of Rockaway Township. <laughs> Mr. Ritchieall is a Marine who served from 2012 to 2019 Specializing as, a, specializing as a mortarman for three years. He's a veteran of Operation Enduring Freedom and a recipient of numerous service awards, including National Defense Service Medal, Marine Corps Good Conduct Medal, Afghanistan Medal with One Star Global War on Terrorism Service Medal, Korean Defense Service Medal, two Sea Service Deployment Ribbons, NATO Medal, International Security System, Security System Force Afghanistan, and the Expert Rifle Badge. That means he's a real good shot. Shane also has gone to, on to earn his associate degree in liberal arts and continue to serve his community as a firefighter. He's also an avid reader. Thank you for your service and congratulations, Mr. Riccio. Hoorah. <laughs> Commissioner Shaw will also present honors to our next veteran, James Coons of Morris Township. Mr. Coons is a Marine who served in 1975 and was honorably discharged after being disabled, disabled from an injury during his service. He was awarded the Good Conduct Medal, Marksman and Sharpshooter Medals, and after his military career served as a security officer, caterer, and fencing coach. This veteran has given back to his community by participating in the American Cancer Society, American Diabetes Association, Rotary Club, Red Cross, American Legion, Knights of Columbus, Friendly Sons of St. Patrick, and local Assumption Church. You now have a listing of all the nonprofits in Morris County you can volunteer for. <laughs> a loving husband to Janice and father to four children, Mr. Coons enjoys woodworking his spare time as a member of American Leech Post in 59 in Morristown, where he currently is serving as adjutant. Congratulations, Mr. Coons, and thank you for your service. <laughs> Presenting the next honor is Commissioner Deborah Smith. Our next honoree is Gary Martin of Denville. Mr. Martin is a U.S. Navy veteran, here he comes, who served from 1974 to 1978. He's a Vietnam-era veteran and post-Vietnam-era veteran who is a recipient of the National Defense Service Ribbon and a Naval Pistol Sharpshooter. Mr. Martin is also a graduate of the Morris and Essex Police Academy and served his community as a police officer. He's a 32-degree Master Mason and past Masonic Shrine Clown. So thank you for your service and congratulations, Mr. Martin. <laughs> Commissioner Smith will also present the next honor, David Acado of Morris Township. Mr. Okada is a veteran of the U.S. Air Force who served from 1965 to 69, including two years in Vietnam. He received a National Defense Service Medal and Air Force Medal 900-3. Mr. Okada was trained as a radar repairman in the Air Force and served at Keesler Air Force Base in Mississippi, Yokota Air Force Base in Japan, and Wurtsmith Air Force Base in Michigan. He earned a bachelor's degree in computer science from the New York Institute of Technology, and his employment History included Director of Operations at Dun & Bradstreet, licensed real estate salesperson with Douglas Eilman, and producer of Asian culture film in New York. Mr. Okada is also a former co-president and board member of the Japanese American Citizen League. He was active in New York City in supporting the establishment of Fred T. Karamatsu Day, a celebration of civil liberties in the Constitution to commemorate the birthday of the Japanese American civil rights and activists best known for resisting the internment of Japanese Americans in the 1940s. Mr. Okada is a member of the American Legion Florham Park, Madison, New Jersey, post 0043. He's married, lives in Morristown, and enjoys golfing. Congratulations, Mr. Okada, and thank you for your service. Our next presenter will be Commissioner Typhoon Selen, and our next honoree is Carol Simmons of Madison Borough. Carol's, Carol's a graduate of Parsippany Troy, Troy Hills High School, served as, in the U.S. Air Force as a sergeant, 
from 1985 to 1995 during Operation Desert Shield and Desert Storm. She was honorably discharged from Air Force Reserve in 1998. An aircrew life support journeyman, Ms. Simmons was responsible for installing life support equipment in the aircraft, including A-10s, F-15s and 16s, F-16s, and assisted the pilots with their survival equipment. She attended military college and has completed training in Arctic survival, combat survival, and water survival, in addition to other course, courses. Ms. Simmons is a recipient of numerous other awards, including Air Force Commendation Medal, Air Force Longevity Service Medal with one Oak Leaf Cluster, NCO Professional Military Education Ribbon with one Oak Leaf Cluster, Air Force Outstanding Unit Award, Air Force Training Ribbon, National Defense Service Medal, and Air Force Good Conduct Medal with one Oak Leaf Cluster. She now enjoys gardening and attending flower shows. Congratulations, Sergeant Simmons, and thank you for your service. I'll probably bump into you at a garden show with my wife. <laughs> Commissioner Salen will also present the next certificate. The veteran being honored is Michael Wisniewski of Morris Township. He served in the U.S. Army Military Intelligence from 1969 to 78 during the Vietnam era. Mr. Wisniewski graduated top of his class from Officer Candidate School as a second lieutenant. From there, he was taught to speak Czechoslovakian and German and spent three years in Germany where he was promoted to captain. He returned to the U.S. in 1974, was assigned a special agent in charge of the region of New Jersey, Pennsylvania, Delaware. Mr. Wisniewski is a recipient of the Army Commendation Medal and the National Defense Medal. He holds a bachelor degree in foreign affairs and political science from Assumption University and an MBA from Southern Illinois University. A former director of HR at Pfizer, he also worked with FedEx in recruiting. Mr. Wisniewski has coached Little League in traveling soccer and helped establish the Morris United Soccer Club. He has resided in Morristown over 40 years and with his wife, Catherine, the joy of his life, as well as their two children and five grandchildren. Thank you for your service and congratulations. Please stand again. Mr. Wisniewski. I now invite Deputy Director Myers back to the podium to speak as I have the privilege of presenting the next, the final three honors. Thank you, Director Krikus. And <clears throat> the next honoree is veteran Edward William D'Angelo of Parsippany, whose military service spanned 43 years. Unfortunately, Mr. D'Angelo passed away in 2009. Accepting his award today is his son, Michael D'Angelo. Mr. Edward D'Angelo was a career naval officer who enlisted with the U.S. Navy before his 17th birthday and served on active duty during the Korean War. He rose to Chief Petty Officer as a CB and retired as a Chief Warrant Officer for. Mr. D'Angelo's resume is a long one, and you can learn more on our website. But briefly, among his many awards were two National Defense Service Medals, three Naval Reserve Meritorious Service Medals, and three Armed Forces Reserve Medals. He continued to serve in the Naval Reserve while working as an electrician until 1990. He also served as a Morris County Deputy Sheriff and as a Parsippany Police Department Special Officer. This veteran also proudly raised five children, four of whom graduated from Penn State University. We thank the D'Angelo family for his service and his eldest son, Michael, for being here today to accept his honors. Congratulations. Director Krikus will remain to present our next honor, which will also be accepted by Michael D'Angelo. That is because our next honoree goes to his brother, Edward. Edward Joseph D'Angelo of Parsippany, also son of Edward William D'Angelo and a decorated career naval officer. He regrets that he could not attend today. Mr. D'Angelo served in the Navy from 1986 until 2016 and is a veteran of Panama, Operation Desert, Desert and Desert, Des Desert Shield, Desert Storm, Somalia, 
Bosnia-Herzegovina, Haiti, Operation Enduring Freedom, and Operation Iraqi Freedom. He attended Penn State and participated in Naval ROTC as a midshipman from 1982 to 1986. He was commissioned as an ensign, <clears throat> ensign and qualified as a naval aviator. Mr. D'Angelo has flown over 4,000 hours, mostly in helicopters, and has completed 10 overseas deployments, eight of them on aircraft carriers. He is credited with 15 life-saving rescues, including a dangerous ocean rescue during Hurricane Floyd. His impressive resume also is on our website, but let me note Mr. D'Angelo was promoted to captain and his awards include three Legion of Merit, the Distinguished Flying Cross, three Meritorious Service Medals, and five Navy Commendations. Mr. D'Angelo is happily married, living in Florida, and is a proud father of twins. We thank him for his service. Our final honoree today may not come as a surprise. <clears throat> He's already standing next to Director Crickus. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, we now salute Michael F. D'Angelo of Parsippany Township. <laughs> A Morris Catholic graduate, Lieutenant Commander D'Angelo served in the U.S. Navy for 40 years, from 1982 into 1922, and earned roughly 50 special military honors awards and awards for that service. His resume and accomplishments are far too many to list here, but allow me to note a few highlights. He began his career as a naval air crewman on various aircraft carriers supporting escorts for the reflagged Kuwaiti tankers, Iranian retaliatory strikes and operations in Libya. Although heft activity duty in 1986, <clears throat> he joined the Naval Reserve, was recalled on 9-11, and was commissioned a Naval Cryptologist Officer in 2003. His <clears throat> deployments included Afghanistan, and as many assignments included the Combined Joint Special Operations Task Force supporting Operation Enduring Freedom, commanding the Naval Operations Support Center in Pennsylvania, working in the Pentagon, serving on the Chief of Naval Operations Staff, serving the Space and Naval Warfare Systems Command, and the Navy Personnel Command in Tennessee. And let me add that service just seems to be in the blood of the D'Angelo family. Michael's son, David, is currently a Chief Petty Officer and Navy CB Diver. That's awesome. <clears throat> With that, sir, let me just say on everyone's behalf that we are eternally thankful for your family's dedication to our nation. And now, will everyone please rise and join me in applauding all of our veterans today. Thank you for your service and your sacrifices. If you could please remain standing. At this time, we will now turn our program again to the honors on the courthouse lawn, where a wreath will be placed at the flagpole to honor our fallen soldiers. Doing the honors will be Morris County Sheriff James Gannon with Captain Walter Rawa of his office directing.
the prairies, to the oceans, white with foam. God bless America, my home sweet home. God bless America, my home sweet home. How about another great round of applause? You can be seated. Just a couple final items. You know, you can see today uh, that we had a beehive of activity to make this ceremony go off as perfectly as possible. And I think they all did a great job. So let me just name a few. We give thanks to Warden Chris Klein, uh, who is responsible for our afternoon's culinary delights. I want to thank our, our veterans and name a few special people, again, who made today special. Michael Del Vecchio for being here to play taps. Thank you. <laughs> Chief Bob, Bob McNally, uh, who played the bagpipes. Always appreciate it. <laughs> and of course, the Lakeview School Choir from Denville. Chris Walker and everybody at Building and Grounds who got everything set up, thank you for making this a great ceremony. <laughs> Captain Walter Rawa in the Sheriff's Office and Chief Jack Ambrose for leading the cadet detail, the 21-gun salute, and orchestrating the honors. <laughs> I want to thank my fellow county commissioners who are here with me today. And I want to thank our dignitaries who attended uh, with us also today. And before breaking for refreshments, because I think this, this is the time, I was uh, at a ceremony for a 100-year-old veteran, turned 100 years old, World War II veteran in Mount Arlington. And I talked to an Army officer from Picatinny Arsenal, and then I talked to another one a little later. They've both been in about 20 years. And I asked them, so do they still serve cream chip beef? <laughs> and they didn't know what I was talking about. What's, what's happened to our military, right? So instead of that, though, we do have hot dogs and refreshments in the back. And again, we all thank you for the honor of, uh, that you have bestowed upon those who sacrificed everything for us and for our freedoms, as Assemblyman Bergen said earlier. Uh, let's go from here and live our lives well and do good. Thank you very much, and God bless.